The Italian Renaissance, which began in Italy in the 14th century, was an immensely transformative period in Western history. Yet we as the beneficiaries of this important era take wholly for granted the impact it had on the development of art and more specifically, architecture. The artists of the Renaissance era turned their gaze toward the classical world, searching for ways to revive and absorb the humanistic ideals of antiquity in creating a completely new form of architecture. The architectural revival of the Italian Renaissance traces its roots back to the age of Roman antiquity. The ancient Romans sought to build architectural representations of the glories of their empire. As they did so, they expanded upon the earlier orders of Greek architecture of post and lintel style and surpassed them by adding magnificent domes, arches, arcades, and fluted columns to their architectural vocabulary. The pinnacle of Roman architecture is exemplified in the Pantheon, built in 27 BCE as a temple dedicated to the Roman god Jupiter and the Pantheon of Roman deities. The dome of the Pantheon was constructed using a gradual reduction of ever thinner layers of reinforced concrete, combined with the weight-saving measures of a coffered ceiling. These superb methods in concrete construction, which in many ways rival those of the modern world, had been lost to history until recent times. This sturdy yet refined construction method has allowed the Pantheon to endure the ravages of time for over 2,000 years. The Pantheon's construction emphasizes the classical ideal of perfection through mathematical precision and harmony. The dome and corresponding space are so exact in their measurements that a perfect sphere could be placed and rotated freely within the Pantheon's open rotunda. The arch was another method of construction perfected by the Romans, allowing them to create expansive works such as the Arch of Constantine, aqueducts, and public spaces such as arenas, bridges, and the Roman Colosseum. The use of the arch also allowed for barrel vault construction, which was used to enclose large spaces without the use of intrusive interior pillars for structural support. The use of arches in a successive line, such as those found in aqueducts, also enabled the creation of exterior spaces known as an arcade. When the buildings of ancient Rome had been viewed by those in the Middle Ages, they were completely unaware of Roman construction methods following the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. They would most certainly have been overwhelmed by their scale, possibly thinking of them more as a topographical feature of the land instead of the decaying edifices of a lost civilization. However, by the 15th century, the Italians began to realize that these ancient structures had indeed been built by men with a secret knowledge which had been lost to them, and they began in earnest to study and understand what methods they had used to create such lasting works of beauty and balance. The main structure of the Florence Cathedral was completed by the 14th century. However, the original plans had called for the construction of a dome, which was lacking for its final completion. The dome was to be constructed based on the classical Roman dome structure, the Pantheon. The challenge was that the technical knowledge to construct such a dome had been lost to the centuries, resulting in an incomplete construction. The artist Filippo Brunelleschi was chosen to build the dome following a series of competitions to find a winning and constructible final design. A dome is essentially an arch in the round, and scaffolding is used to support the weight of the growing arch, or in this case, dome, until the keystone can be put in place allowing for its own weight to be supported as a freestanding arch. However, this form of construction was prohibitive in this case due to the severe lack of timber required for such a large dome to be constructed. The solution Brunelleschi devised was a method of construction of a hollow dome comprising of an outer and an inner dome to be constructed simultaneously. This was done by constructing eight arches which were raised like individual ribs and in turn were connected with other arches to create its signature egg-like shape. The construction of an inner dome allowed the workers to work safely within the rising dome as it was constructed, while avoiding the need to construct an unwieldy scaffolding for support. 
This hollow double dome also served to reduce the overall weight of the dome through the use of less material, much like the coffered ceiling of the dome of the Pantheon. To add further strength to the structure, Brunelleschi utilized bricks woven together in a herringbone pattern for added strength, something he no doubt had borrowed from the Muslim and Byzantine construction methods. When the dome was completed, it was the largest in the world, and it would remain so until the construction of St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican. The construction of the main body of the cathedral had been completed in the Gothic style, yet Brunelleschi did introduce some classically inspired additions to the cathedral as well. As a means of supporting the growing dome structure upon the walls below it, Brunelleschi introduced semicircular additions known as tribunes, which served as both classical decoration and added wall support without the use of the Gothic-styled flying buttress. In addition to these strengthening elements, he had a chain of wood, stone, and iron woven together along the base of the dome to hold the wall secure against the powerful physical forces which the dome placed upon the supporting walls. The dome was never quite finished, as can be seen by the ring of unfinished masonry which remains at the base. After Brunelleschi's death, attempts were made by local officials to have the dome completed with a decorative arcade, but Michelangelo intervened and prevented the completion so that the final product of the dome could be viewed as the pure architectural measure of Brunelleschi's phenomenal accomplishment. It is important to note that although Brunelleschi may have been inspired by the Roman pantheon for his dome's construction, he completed the dome without an architectural precedent. The dome is truly unique in its design and construction. The construction of the dome signified a change in human achievement for the era, emphasizing the growing influence of humanism reborn in the ideals of the very early Renaissance. Brunelleschi did not simply try to compete with the works of antiquity, he desired to surpass them. The Pazzi Chapel is one of the earliest examples of the new architecture inspired by the humanism of the Renaissance. The chapel, with its rhythms and proportions and its welcoming and open appearance, stands in stark contrast with the dark and foreboding Gothic structures which preceded it. As with the Medici-inspired commission to build the dome of the Florence Cathedral, Brunelleschi was commissioned by the wealthy Pazzi family to design and construct the chapel. Looking at the construction of the chapel, we see one of Brunelleschi's trademark methods with the use of Pietra Serena, the gray green stone used for the calming decorative elements of the walls and the ceilings. The use of the ancient orders of balance and mathematical perfection are also clearly seen with the use of squares, rectangles, and circles. The design of the chapel borrows heavily from the Pantheon through the creation of large open dome spaces, including the use of an oculus. The dome also rests upon pendentives, a further classical element utilized in this structure. In addition to the decorative elements which included fluted pilasters with Corinthian capitals, the use of roundels is also reminiscent of classical Roman features found in structures such as the Arch of Constantine. The chapel's roundels are formed from baked terracotta, which used high heat preparation processes allowing for highly colorful pigments to be effectively used in the glazes to color and decorate them. The main facade of the chapel also reflects classical influences with the use of smooth Tuscan columns and Corinthian capitals, which stand as supportive sentinels to the welcoming balance of the arched entrance. Indeed, Brunelleschi was able to utilize far more classical elements in the construction of the Pazzi Chapel over that of his more famous construction, the Dome of the Florentine Cathedral. On the Janiculum Hill, one of the famous Seven Hills of Rome, stands a small classically themed construction known as the Tempietto. Designed and constructed by the high Renaissance artist and architect Bramante, this small, compact creation clearly exemplifies the influence of classical antiquity on Renaissance architecture. The building serves as a marker of the traditional place upon which the Christian apostle Peter was inverted and crucified by the Romans. This small construction harkens back to an earlier form of Christian construction known as a martria which served to mark the location where a Christian martyr had been killed in the course of defending their beliefs. The Tempietto's classical influence can be found in the small classical temple of the Roman Forum, the Temple of Vesta.
This small temple was also round with columns, capitals, and a dome at the center. These particular features also find their way into Bramante's Tempietto's construction. His emphasis on the perfection of the square and circle reflect the ideals of antiquity and the high renaissance that the divine could be both represented and better understood through the use of these balancing forms. These classical influences can be seen with the use of the steps, the stylobate, the colonnade, drum, and dome, as well as the triglyphs and metopes which ring the structure over the colonnade. These columns also harken back to the Doric order of classical Greece. However, they lack the fluted columns of this order and are based upon the ancient Roman modification known as the Tuscan order, which used solid columns instead of those of the fluted Doric. All of these elements serve as a clear example of the classical influence on Bermonte's final High Renaissance design. These classical influences would also play a major role in Bramante's other classically inspired masterpiece, St. Peter's Basilica. The Italian Renaissance may have begun in Florence, yet its greatest architectural manifestation was created in Rome, the city of its ancient inspirational source. In 1506, Pope Julius II desired to build the most magnificent church in all of Christendom, and he would bring together the skills and genius of three men, Bramante, Michelangelo, and Raphael, to realize his plans. In the days of ancient Rome, the site of the church was originally the Circus Maximus of Nero, where chariot races were held as well as the execution of some of the early Christian believers. In order to build the new church on this site, the existing church of Old St. Peter's had to be demolished. Old St. Peter's was one of the largest and oldest churches in the ancient world. It was certainly the most venerable church due to the legend that it stood on the site of an ancient necropolis or burial ground which was supposedly the place where the Christian Apostle Peter had been buried following his execution at the hands of Roman authorities. The early Christians created a small monument on the site of Peter's tomb which eventually led to the Emperor Constantine in the 4th century commanding that a basilica or church be constructed on the site, with the altar being placed directly over the tomb of the Apostle Peter to signify the linking of papal authority between Peter as the first pope and the New Testament figure Jesus Christ. There were two Renaissance ideas which were to be strictly followed in the construction. First, it was to follow the rule of ancient architecture, based upon the perfect forms of the square and the circle, and it had to be on such a large scale that it surpassed even the grandest monuments of antiquity. Pope Julius called on the Italian artist and architect Bramante to provide an architectural plan for this new construction. The plan for this new St. Peter's was different and then it moved away from the traditional Roman Basilica in favor of the classically inspired ideals of the High Renaissance, emphasizing mathematical order and balance through beauty in perfect proportions. Bramante's original plan for the new church clearly emphasized this classical balance and order with a proposed shape of a Greek cross. The design was classically influenced through the use of perfect circles and perfect squares, as well as the use of several domes, arches, and other classically inspired motifs for the final construction. However, the final construction departed from the original plan of the Greek cross to allow for a more traditional Roman basilica shape, which was used in the design of the final construction to accommodate the needs in facilitating large crowds of worshippers. The church would undergo several more design changes through its century-long construction, including the loss of its two large campanile or bell towers. The construction period spanned two architectural epochs between the High Renaissance and the early Baroque, which saw its final decorative elements added in the style of the Baroque by the artists Maderno and Bernini, which added decorative flourish to the then modified classical design of Bramante. St. Peter's Basilica is the grand culmination of the methods and ideals of antiquity being developed, rediscovered, and implemented in the architecture of the Italian Renaissance. The use of the classically inspired arch, dome, pilaster, and capitals of various ancient orders serve to create a magnificent amalgam surpassing any construction of both the Italian Renaissance and the world of classical antiquity.